Hey everyone, this is Caitlin Regal with DCAA. I am so happy that you took a break from Prime Day to join us and uh, do a little freestyling here with Ask Me Anything. Uh, if you are not familiar with DCAA, we are defense contract audit agency. We perform uh, financial and advisory services for our nation's uh, buying commands, federal agencies. Um, and we have a lot of questions today um, about accounting systems, which is why you see that up on my screen. So I wanted to go over a few questions that we received. Uh, first and foremost, let's talk about how to get started. So one of the uh, first questions we were asked was, what's the process to validate my company, that my company has a DCAA compliant accounting system, which I think is such a great question. Um, and here on the screen is how to get started. Um, basically, uh, first you gotta see if you're ready. Um, I think that's first and foremost, I think that is so important um, and you can, do that by going to our website, dcaa.mil, under checklist and tools, and you will find the pre-award accounting system adequacy checklist. Uh, you may often hear this referred to as a checklist or a narrative. It is a nine to 10 page PDF document. And in that is all of the criteria that we use to perform our audits. And it is a yes or no type of uh, survey that is being asked and you answer yes and provide a narrative as to why you said yes. There's a few sentences there to support why you said yes. Um, and hint, hint, if you said no to any of these questions, you are not ready for an audit. And I say that with the utmost respect, um, that we don't want to waste your resources as a small business, um, time, money, um, any resource imaginable. Um, and we don't want to waste our resources. As a, a federal agency, we know how precious that is to all of us. So um, if you've said no to any of the criteria, I highly recommend revisiting the design of your accounting system and seeing how you can uh, change, manipulate, update uh, to be able to say yes to whatever criteria you originally said no to. Now, if you said yes and you provide a um, two to four sentence paragraph as to why you said yes, we'll look at that, we'll uh, analyze that, and we'll be uh, making the decision there's enough information there. We feel this contractor is ready to support an audit and we'll move forward. This adequacy checklist or the narrative often called um, is kind of our go or no go to start the audit, to kickstart that audit. Um, so your contracting officer will most likely ask you to fill this out or DCMA will ask you to fill that out and then they'll send the request over to us. Um, if they don't and they come right to DCAA to request that audit directly, uh, we'll reach out to you and send you that and ask you to fill it out. Um, it, it works both ways. So if you, um, time is of the essence, I should say, and the, the faster you fill this out, the faster we can get started. Um, the process for this audit typically takes between 60, um, um, and 90 days, depending on how responsive and supportive you are as a small business. When DCAA asks for that walkthrough of your accounting system, asks for um, you know documentation, reports, examples, um, we'll say, hey, um, you said yes to this, can you demonstrate how? It's really important to talk about that DCAA is looking at the design of your accounting system. We're not necessarily looking for transaction testing or performing transaction testing. Um, so again, you fill this out, send it to your contracting officer or DCMA and they request us to perform the audit. We only perform these audits at the request of a federal agency. So whether it is a buying command or whether it is DCMA, we do not perform these types of audits at the request of contractors. I wish we did, but then 
BCAA just doesn't have the resources. Uh, that's why we only do them at the request of federal agencies. So that was the first question. Um, let me see if I... Also, um, contractor qualifications, and you should see this um, within the solicitation or the RFP. It is uh, straight up. Um, I won't read the whole um, slide to you, but you need to be in order to be qualified, that last bullet there, which I have in bold, um, eligibility to receive the award under the applicable laws and regulations. And that's where that compliance with FAR and DFARS is um, when performing these accounting system audits. What are the objectives of our audit? And we're looking at the design of your accounting system to see if it's acceptable for the prospective contract award. When we're talking about the prospective contract award, we are talking about cost reimbursable type of contracts. Uh, you won't see these performed for a fixed price um, solicitation uh, unless it has a progress payment clause in it. Um, these are strictly for cost reimbursable cost type. If you're, you know, see solicitations or RFPs with um, cost plus fixed fee, um, you know, uh, CPAF, time and materials, all of that good stuff. Um, again, you should be prepared to demonstrate how the accounting system design satisfies SF1408 during the field work stage. What, Katie, what is the SF1408? It is the standard form 1408. And again, that has all of the criteria that we perform our audit to. Um, so again, it's everything within that uh, nine to 10 page PDF narrative. And again, you should be saying yes to all of that criteria. Um, and if you are uh, wondering what we do during our audit, there is a link there for um, the audit program. And that's everything from our risk assessment, our field work stage, and wrapping up our audit. So you can see what we're doing in real time. Uh, so next question I got, uh, what is a DCAA compliant accounting system? And I, I want to take the words right out of DFARS. If you are new to the game and you're not familiar with DFARS, that is the defense supplement to the federal acquisition regulation. So again, it's another layer of regulations uh, specific to the Department of Defense. And per DFARS 252, 242, 7006 uh, defines an acceptable accounting system as a system that complies with the system criteria in paragraph C of this clause. And we will get to paragraph C um, to provide reasonable assurance that applicable laws and regulations are complied with. Uh, the accounting system and cost data is reliable. Uh, risk of misallocation and mischarging are minimized and that uh, contract allocations and charges are consistent with your billing procedures. So we check all of that during our field work and our risk assessment. Big key here is we're just looking to ensure that any risk of mischarging the government, misallocating um, your expenses uh, uh, for each contract, is minimized. We want to make sure that your accounting system is uh, accumulating and allocating cost accurately. So defining an accounting system, and I'm going to read this word from word. This is from the same citation from DFARS 252, 7006. This is um, the bullet two under paragraph A. The contractor's system or systems for accounting methods, procedures, controls, um, and controls established to gather, record, classify, analyze, summarize, interpret, and present accurate and timely financial data for reporting and compliance with applicable laws and regulations and management decisions. I feel like I can say that in my sleep um, at this point, but it's so important because there's a lot going on there. Uh, how are you gathering your information? How are you recording your information? How are you classifying your expenses? Every business does this differently and that's key to take home here because it's gonna lead into a frequently asked question is, well, my friend Joe Contractor down the street on Main Street here has a QuickBooks accounting system and he has an approved DCIA report. So I can say I have, um, I have QuickBooks. So I can say I have 
an uh, uh, acceptable accounting system. And that is not the case. We do these on a uh, contractor or business by business basis. Every contractor gathers, records, classifies, analyzes, um, and interprets why we do this on a case by case basis. You keep talking about system criteria, Katie. What are you talking about when you say that? And I talked about that um, sub uh, subparagraph C of this DFARS clause. And this is all of the uh, criteria that we are testing. To, I shouldn't say testing, that we are um, reviewing uh, the design of your accounting system for. So we want to make sure, again, that you are saying yes to all of these uh, criteria. And um, we, hopefully you can demonstrate why you said yes to all of the criteria listed here. And again, if you want to um, look up this criteria, it is under DFARS 252, 242, 7006. Under uh, subparagraph C, should come right up, even if you have standard form 1408 criteria. And again, this is all the criteria. Are we saying yes or no to? Hopefully we can say yes. This is what is included in our report when we opine on the design of your accounting system. So with that being said, um, I know we have a few more questions regarding compliant accounting systems. And does DCAA have a list of validators to ensure my company has a DCAA compliant accounting system. So I want to go to our frequently asked questions. Uh, give me a second here to get to it towards the end here. Uh, and if you sign up for this course uh, with the Department of Navy Office of Small Business Program, you get to see this course in its entirety, um, which will be hopefully a uh, Within the next few months, we'll get the 2025 dates up there for you. So frequently asked questions is, how do I request a DCAA accounting system? If you recall before, you cannot. We do those requests or we perform audits at the request of buying commands, contracting officers, um, only federal agencies, unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at that. How do I get a DCAA approved government accounting system? There is no such thing. Again, there's no approved software because we are looking at the design of your system and only you can design your system. And um, again, that software, um, is QuickBooks acceptable? And the answer is maybe. Again, it's all in the design. So I've personally performed audits where QuickBooks gets a thumbs up and I've performed audits where unfortunately, if they're using QuickBooks, they get a thumbs down. And again, case by case basis on um, how you account for your costs and how you accumulate and allocate those costs. Here are some resources uh, for small businesses. Uh, QR code there. Uh, hats off to Katie for um, you know being in 2024 and putting QR codes in there. Um, the audit process overview for uh, contractors is a 105 page PDF document. Um, it's my little DCAA Bible and it has everything in there. If you want to just hit F, uh, control F and look up SF1408 accounting systems. You want to know more about overhead rates or uh, general and administrative expenses. All of it is there. You want to know more about timekeeping systems. It's a really great place to start. Uh, directory of audit programs, again, because we like to be transparent here at DCAA. Um, you can see what we're going to do in real time from our risk assessment to wrapping up the audit. Adequacy checklists are under the uh, checklist and tools portion of our website, and they include the pre-award accounting system, which we just talked about, um, contract pricing proposal checklist, forward pricing rate proposal checklist, incur cost adequacy checklist. We will not kickstart any audit unless we have what is called an adequacy review. Whatever information you are presenting, whether it's in the form of a proposal or costs that are already incurred, um, we review uh, the adequacy of it to ensure that all the information is there, that we have a audit that is going to be sustainable and supportable by you. Um, and that, again, that's our no or no go um, way of 
making sure we can move forward with an audit. Uh, small business outreach survey. This is on our website, so I'm not, I don't want to spend too much time with that. This is my contact information. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, I am in and out of webinars like this all day, every day. Um, so email is best. I have two more questions here. It looks like. How can a small business connect with DC? CAA locally for business under 25,000. Um, unfortunately, DCAA is not in the procurement realm. So we are not here for goods and services. Um, we kind of already have vendors established. Um, we are here strictly for uh, support for small businesses. So any sort of questions you have regarding government contracting, auditing, or compliance is when uh, you can reach out to us. What advice do you have for a new business looking to provide quotations on RFPs on SAM.gov? .gov is the system for award management. Um, and that's where you're going to find a lot, a lot of opportunities. RFPs are requests for proposals. Um, and you might hear them used uh, simultaneously with, with um, solicitations. And coming from a DCAA perspective, uh, the advice I have is to really read through that RFP or that solicitation, see what contract clauses are in there, because once you go into negotiations and are under contract, you must abide by those rules. So see what you can and cannot do while under contract. Um, a lot of small businesses kind of skip that step and are just really excited to get under contract, whether it's their first or, um, you know, first few contracts. And um, I've seen a lot of businesses get in trouble that way because they, they didn't read the fine print. Read the fine print and be sure that not only are you able to perform um, the services or provide the goods that are required within the terms of the RFP, but that your accounting and bookkeeping is up to par with what it needs to be um, and that you're able to accurately bill the government. So that is my advice and my two cents. Uh, so uh, Destiny, Amber, I don't know if we've had any more questions come in, uh, but that is all I really have for today. Uh, we haven't had any questions come in uh, using the Q&A feature. I'm not sure if anyone wants to ask a live question using that feature that Katie can answer for you. Yep, I don't see any either, but uh, I'm here for any other questions. I, you know what I could do? Um, pull up the website since we have time, um, if that's okay. Definitely. And just show where everything is from what I was talking about before. Cool. All right. So pulling that up now. All right, so this is our website. I'm still sharing, right? Y'all. Yeah, sure. Good. All right, awesome. So this is a DCAA.mil as in military. And under customers, uh, you can see uh, guidance and you will see everything that I've uh, talked about here today. Um, our contract audit manual is what we use for guidance for us if we need to know it's their directory of audit programs i talked about that mrds audit guidance memos Ooh, i lost it here that is uh everything that we check for when we're performing our risk assessment to see if there's any updates on how to handle costs so feel free to uh search that if you have any concerns or need to know more about any select areas of cost there the cost guidebook uh, the FAR 31205 cost principles to see what is allowable and what is not allowable. 
cost accounting standards for uh, you contractors that are on the brink of graduating from small businesses. Uh, congratulations if you are on the brink of that. Uh, you now have to adhere to cost accounting standards. Um, I will pause here because uh, there's a lot of questions for small businesses. Do I have to adhere to cost accounting standards? The answer is no. If you are a certified small business, um, you know, whether it is uh, certified through the SBA um, or uh, the amount of employees that you have or the annual revenue, um, you are exempt from having to follow cost accounting standards. Now, once you are no longer considered a small business and you hit a bid, the trigger amount is $7.5 million um, with no previous other previous cast covered contracts. Um, anything, you know, 7.5 million to 50 million within that first year, you have modified cast coverage. Once you have a sum of $50 million, $50 million or more in contract awards, you are fully cast covered. Uh, above federal acquisition regulation, DFARS is down here. So um, everything I mentioned is on our website. We, we try to make it a one-stop shop. Um, so hopefully you can get most of your information from this site. Uh, proposal adequacy checklist. These are all the checklists and tools that we use. Um, ICE model, if you are not familiar with incur cost submissions, that's a really great start there. Um, I use that quite frequently when I first came on board with DCAA so I could see uh, what, compi what comprises a fringe pool, an overhead pool, and a GNA pool. So, so that definitely helped me there. Um, locator, if you're not sure, um, who is your local cognizant DCAA office? I get this question all the time and I have to look it up for people. Um, Destiny, can you give me a, a zip code where you are? 207. Or Amber. 20 what? 772. So your Cognizant DCAA office would be Southern Maryland branch office. And they have their email there. I am outside of Philly. This is my zip code. Please don't mail, send me mail. Um, this is the, the PA Keystone State branch office. That would be if I had a business, this would be who uh, is my DCAA office. Um, and their email is there as well. So really great tool there. Locator. Uh, small business. There's a lot of small business resources here. We talked about this audit process overview for um, information for contractors. I'm going to let this load a second. getting there. Ah, see, I said something and it stopped loading. Um, all right, 105 page PDF document recently updated, which is pretty exciting. If you hit control F, let's say Katie keeps talking about the SF 1408. I want to know more about that. It's mentioned six times. It's physically here in this document. Let's say we want to know more about timekeeping. It's mentioned 11 times. So you can start researching timekeeping. There's labor charging, timekeeping procedures, there's, um, all that good stuff. So it's a really good starting point for any sort of research. Here's some presentations that um, have recently, some of them have been edited and updated. Um, some are new. This year, um, from a DCA perspective, breaking into GovCom, barriers to pay payment, audits under the Cyber Sitter program. If you're a program, uh, know what to expect from the government there. Um, all that good stuff. So, again, really great starting point. You can see where we are going to be. 
Uh, I believe this needs to be a little updated, but it should be pretty accurate. We updated it in the spring. So we have a few events left. Um, oh, snap. Here's uh, Department of Navy Gold Coast. We're, we're so excited to be partnering with uh, the Navy and be at this uh, lovely event, very large. Um, we are doing two uh, presentations at this event, including breaking into GovCon uh, and accounting system requirements, which has been recently updated and much more detailed than it has been. So again, pretty excited about that. And and uh, another, one last frequently asked question that we get here at DCAA is when can I expect a proposal audit or can I get my rates um, uh, audited or reviewed? And the answer is DCAA typically isn't involved with proposals unless it is around $10 million or more for a fixed price contract or $100 million or more for a cost type contract. Um, so unless you're hitting those thresholds, there's a, a, a high chance that you may not see us. I say uh, a high chance because um, there's shades of gray when it comes to those two thresholds. So if you have a $7 million firm fixed price proposal and the contracting officer hasn't worked with you before and they're not really sure about your rates, they may ask DCAA to come in and either perform an audit or some advisory services to help them get the warm and fuzzies for negotiations. So that's the, the shades of gray or the, the maybe part. Um, otherwise, those are the, the typical thresholds that you see for audits when it comes to uh, forward pricing and uh, proposals. But that is really all I have. I'll pause if any questions have come in. No, nothing yet. I think that um, everything that you provided covers a lot of what people asking questions about, especially in the questions people provided before this ask me anything. So I am not exactly. Oh, we do have one that popped in. Um, they ask, what are some common mistakes you see companies make during audits and how can they be prevented? Uh, first of all, awesome question. Um, and, and we do, I do have a slide on that. Let me get back to it. I'm still sharing, right? Yes, no, I'm not. still sharing. Oh, I am? Okay, cool. All right, so. Com oh. Examples of non-compliance, and these are, I don't want to say common mistakes because we don't really track them, but some examples that I've run into in the past and I know all other auditors have is not posting at least monthly to your books of account, your books and records. Um, hopefully you should be doing that anyway when you have um, bi-weekly or monthly um, time timekeeping or um, time cards. Hey, you should be doing that at the very least, um, but it's important to post monthly and, um, you know, be up to date on the go goings on of your business. Failure to properly segregate direct versus indirect cost is um, one that we see quite often. And that is because, uh, let me paint a picture of a small business. The CEO is a brilliant engineer and um, he or she is working uh, direct on, you know, two contracts, let's say, um, and also performing executive functions of the business, right? So you have a mix of direct and indirect labor there. So uh, we've seen it where, you know, CEOs or executives have um, booked all of their costs direct or all of their costs indirect. Um, or just accidentally double counted their time or have had two separate time sheets. Um, things get a little funky in that regard, but um, that's an example of either double counting cost or not accumulating and allocating those costs direct to the contract or indirectly 
to the contracts. Um, that would be the best example I have for that. Um, improper timekeeping, right? So moving costs uh, or moving time from one project to another, I've seen that before. Um, having somebody change uh, the time on your timesheet without the employee's signature, sign off or approval. Um, employees not keeping time. So you should be recording your time at least daily. So um, we see that often. Let's say you have a, you're performing on a contract that explicitly states within the contract terms, um, overtime is not allowed. And you have your employees working overtime and you're paying them and you have um, submitted that cost for reimbursement to the government. It's expressly unallowable per the terms of the contract. This is where it is so important to brief your contracts to go over that RFP, that solicitation, once it's under contract, getting the key terms within the contract and making sure you're summarizing them on your contract briefs. So you know when you're putting your invoices together for the government, hey, overtime's unallowable, we need to remove this from the invoice and the incur cost submission. Um, and then inadequate billing of subcontracts. So um, the typical practice is for businesses to include subcontract costs when they're paid. However, small businesses can't necessarily pay their subcontracts um, and wait to get paid by the government. So include your subcontract invoices within your invoices to the government, get paid for them, and then immediately pay your subcontracts, at least within 30 days of receiving payment from the government. That is the, the requirement, is just making sure that you're paying your subs and your vendors timely, especially when getting reimbursed from the government. Um, it's kind of like a double dip in there too as well, um, if you're not paying your subs and your vendors. So um, hopefully I answered that first question. I think that was great. I see two more coming in. What Okay. Yeah, I see two more. Uh, what trends do you see in the future of DCAA audits and accounting systems? Um, wow, great question. Uh, as far as accounting systems, I know we've been, um, I don't think that will necessarily change. I think um, we, you'll see more post-award accounting systems um, based on either request or risk. Um, I think that'll just always be one of those, what is called a demand assignment for DCAA, and we do see a lot of them. Um, are there any notable cases where companies faced significant challenges and how do they overcome them? I wish I had an answer to that because I find that fascinating because we need to hear those kind of those success stories, right? Um, from a DCAA perspective, I don't have any um, but I would love to at least follow that um, and see where that goes. Check LinkedIn and see, you know, hashtag small businesses um, and, and you'd find a lot. Um, I definitely go down a rabbit hole sometimes of interesting stories and success stories, all of that stuff. So um, that's all I have to say about that. That's really all I have. I'm standing by if there's any other questions. We can give it a few more minutes to see if anything pops through. If not, we are definitely happy to give time back. These slides will, um, I'll get a copy of these slides and post them to our website. They will be under past events and you can click on the graphic which shows Caitlin and um, the slides will be available there for download.